Uh, so, students, today we'll talk about histology of parenchymal organs. It's the second concluding lecture. Previous lecture was about hollow organs, general histology of hollow organs, and today we'll talk about histology of the parenchymal organs, and we'll find the similarities between different parenchymal organs and also differences. And this topic will be important for you for the uh, final exam, when you will be getting ready for the final exam. This information will be very important. So, let's go. Uh, during uh, this semester and previous semester, we have studied uh, different systems of our body. There are visceral systems, regulatory systems, somatic systems. And uh, we started visceral systems uh, or internal organ systems, which include digestive, respiratory, urinary, and reproductive. And we have found they uh, have um, a lot of similarities. And uh, those structures, those organs, may be divided into two groups. There are hollow organs or luminal organs, which have cavity and wall and wall has layered structure and in the previous lecture we have been talking about layered structure of walls of different hollow organs and today we'll talk about parenchymal organs or solid organs which haven't those uh, luminal structure they haven't wall but they have solid tissue and today we'll talk about those organs uh, so here we can see digestive system its digestive tract and here we can see hollow organs, oral cavity, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine. And those organs, they are hollow organs. But also digestive system has glands which are associated with the digestive tract. There are salivary glands, liver and pancreas. They aren't hollow organs. They haven't wall, but they form another group of organs, they are parenchymal organs or solid organs. In digestive systems there are salivary glands, liver and pancreas, and also there are another parenchymal organs in, in other systems. So we divide all the organs of visceral systems into two basic groups, hollow, tubular or luminal organs, and glandular or parenchymal solid organs. And when you answer to the question about histology of some organ, you should first of all classify this organ and to identify is this organ hollow and you should describe the uh, layered structure of the wall or this organ is glandular or parenchymal organ and you should describe uh, features of the tissue of this organ. So today we'll talk about these organs. And if you need to revise the material about hollow organs, you should go to the previous lecture. It's part one, hollow organs, histology of the hollow organs. And now we are going to the glandular organs. Uh, so here we can see different solid organs. In digestive system, uh, there are salivary glands, liver and pancreas. They are parenchymal or solid or glandular organs. In respiratory system, we also have solid or parenchymal organ and its lung. So lungs, they are parenchymal organs of respiratory system. In the urinary system, parenchymal organs are kidneys. Here we can see them. Uh, in male reproductive system, there are testicles and also accessory glands, prostate gland, seminal vesicles, bulbourethral glands. And in female reproductive system, ovaries and also there are memory glands and there are different parenchymal organs of those systems. So what is the general principle of the parenchymal organ structure? They have two basic components. They have uh, contain uh, functionally active tissue. It's called parenchyma. Here we can see parenchyma and also supporting and trophic tissue which is called stroma. So what is it? Parenchyma, it contains different specific cells. Those cells are different in different organs. They are specific for those organs and they provide main function of the organ. Here we can see parenchyma. And parenchyma is different in different organs because different organs, they have different structures. So that's why parenchyma is different and it's specific. And also there is non-specific part of the organ, it's stroma. 
stroma, it's supporting and trophic tissue. Uh, so it's non-specific. It uh, doesn't provide specific function, but it provides support for parenchyma. It maintains parenchyma, it provides support, and it provides nutrition, protection of parenchyma. Uh, so stroma is formed mainly by connective tissue, loose and dense fibrous connective tissue. Here we can see this tissue. And it fills the space between parenchymal structures. Also, it divides parenchyma into structural units. Uh, so uh, stroma, it's non-specific part. It's similar in different organs. And the differences, main differences in the organs are uh, located in parenchyma. And they don't exist without each other. So parenchyma is located inside the stroma. And here we can see localization of parenchyma. Uh, parenchyma is uh, located inside the stroma. Uh, it's embedded into the stroma. Here we can see parenchymal structure and it's located inside the stroma. Here we can see it. So different stromal structures, they contain parenchymal uh, cells and parenchymal structures. So Parenchyma is a specific part of organ which provides main functions of the organ and usually it's made up of epithelium. It's rule, but uh, there are some exceptions. So usually parenchyma is epithelium, but in the immune system there are immune cells which form parenchyma and also later we'll talk about this. Uh, so usually parenchyma is epithelial tissue, usually glandular epithelium, which forms parenchyma. Uh, and also there is stroma. It's made up of connective tissue. Connective tissue surrounds epithelial structures and forms stroma. It's non-specific part of the organ and it provides support for the parenchyma. There are blood vessels and nerves. So students, we can compare this with stuff of different organizations. For example, different organizations, they have um, stuff which provides main functions of this organization. In the hospital, there are doctors and nurses. They provide specific functions of this uh, institution. Uh, in the school, the main functions of school are provided by teachers and teacher assistants. Um, they teach students. And also in different institutions, uh, there is non-specific stuff so-called stroma. And this non-specific stuff also provides important functions. There are different economists, uh, security, cleaners, uh, also um, uh, different workers, which may uh, work uh, everywhere, in school, in hospital, uh, in, in other institution. And uh, they are non-specific, but they help main uh, staff to provide specific functions. So economists, cleaners, guards, they help doctors and nurses to provide treatment of patients. Also, uh, guards, economists, uh, cleaners, they are working in school and also they help teachers uh, to teach uh, students because they provide another functions. So it's like stroma. Uh, so stroma, it's non-specific, but also important part. It's similar in different organs. And stroma provides protection and support for parenchyma. And when you answer to the question about structure of some parenchymal organ, you should mainly remember differences in parenchyma. Stroma is similar everywhere. It's connective tissue, loose, uh, which forms usually lobules, and dense, it forms septa and capsule. And uh, intralobular uh, loose fibrous connective tissue it contains also blood vessels and nerves, which also provide this supportive and trophic function because they carry different nutrients to the parenchymal cells. And uh, those organs they are called glandular or parenchymal or solid organs. And uh, they include different exocrine glands, including liver, salivary glands. Uh, they are completely exocrine glands. Also, there are endocrine glands, it's thyroid, parathyroid glands, adrenal glands, uh, which provide endocrine function. They have different types of secretion, but uh, both types of glands, they provide secretion of something. And they are formed by epithelium. Epithelium forms parenchyma. Also, glandular organs, they include mixed glands. 
such as pancreas and non-glandular organs or organs with endocrine and non-endocrine functions such as ovaries, testes, kidneys, lungs. They also are uh, parenchymal organs. So here we can see plenty of organs which have parenchymal pattern of their organization. And uh, let's make a classification of parenchymal organs. So there are organs of visceral systems, mainly visceral organs, and there are glandular organs of visceral systems or exocrine glands. Uh, they include salivary glands, pancreas, liver, also completely exocrine uh, or typical exocrine glands are prostate gland, valvourethral glands of male reproductive system and mammary glands of female reproductive system. So there are glandular organs or exocrine glands of visceral systems. It's the first group. Also visceral systems, uh, they contain organs of uh, visceral systems that are not exocrine glands. But those structure resembles their exocrine glands structure. So they are alike exocrine glands, but they aren't them. Uh, there are lungs, kidneys, testes, and ovaries. They are alike exocrine glands, but they aren't exocrine glands. Uh, later we'll understand what does it mean. Uh, in the second group. Uh, third group. Uh, there are organs of other systems, uh, organs of the endocrine system. It's regulatory system, but uh, organs of it, they are completely parenchymal. There are uh, endocrine glands, and there are thyroid gland, parathyroid glands, epiphysis, adrenal glands, adenohypophysis. They are endocrine glands, which also have parenchyma and stroma. And a fourth group of parenchymal organs, there are organs of immune system. Immune system also, it's regulatory system, it provides immune supervision. And there are lymphoid organs, they also have parenchyma and stroma, and they include spleen, lymph nodes, red bone marrow, and thymus. So here we can see plenty of organs which have parenchyma and stroma, and they are called parenchymal organs. So there are exocrine glands, typical exocrine glands, also organs which are alike exocrine glands, but they aren't. Uh, third group, endocrine glands, and also immune organs, it's fourth group. And let's uh, go to the first group of the organs, to the glandular organs of visceral systems or exocrine glands. Uh, let's look at the typical structure of the exocrine gland. So. Exocrine gland, it has uh, secretory units. They produce something, they produce some secretory product depending on this gland. Salivary glands, they produce saliva. Uh, liver, it produces bile. Uh, pancreas, it produces pancreatic juice. Uh, memory glands, they produce milk. Prostate gland and valvourethral glands, they produce mucus. So there are secretory units. They produce uh, different secretory products and uh, they form secretory uh, units, groups of secretory cells. And also there are ducts. They are opened, uh, they begin from the secretory units and they form a branched tree-like uh, system. Here we can see it. Uh, so here we can see branching pattern. Uh, they collect secretory products from each secretory unit. So each secretory unit has a um, way to release secretory products. And there are secretory ducts, excretory ducts, which collect secretory products from each uh, secretory unit. So in salivary glands, they collect saliva, in uh, liver, they, co they collect bile, uh, and so on. Uh, so here we can see branched system of the ducts. And together, ducts with secretory units, they are formed by epithelial tissue. They have different structures in different organs, and this we call parenchyma. It's parenchyma of the exocrine gland, and it's typical parenchyma. And these secretory units, they are surrounded by loose fibrous connective tissue. Here we can see loose fibrous connective tissue. It fills the space and surrounds them. Uh, it contains capillaries, which provide nutrition for the secretory cells. And uh, here we can see it. Uh, and also there is dense fibrous connective tissue. It forms septa between the lobules. Uh, 
uh, here we can see the globules C are separated by septa. Here we can see them. And also, uh, there is a connective tissue capsule which surrounds entire gland. Here we can see capsule which forms septa which divide gland into the lobules. Uh, so, capsule, septa, they are formed by dense connective tissue and loose connective tissue is located inside the lobules. It's intralobular connective tissue and it's interlobular connective tissue which forms septa or trabecula. And also there is a capsule. Capsule, septa or trabecula and intralobular connective tissue, they form stroma. Here we can see it. Uh, so stroma doesn't produce saliva or bile, it doesn't produce pancreatic juice, uh, but it surrounds the cells which are, are doing that and uh, it provides their function. Uh, so there are parenchyma and stroma. And uh, let's look at the uh, lobules. Here we can see lobules. They contain several uh, secretory units and also there are ducts. Ducts which are located inside the lobule, they are called intralobular ducts. Usually a duct which begins directly from the secretory unit, it's intercalated duct. And also there are uh, ducts over the following generations. And duct which excites from the lobule is called uh, interlobular duct. And there are different orders, some following orders uh, or generations of the uh, interlobular ducts. They are bigger than intralobular. They are located in the interlobular connective tissue here. So they excite from the lobules. And here we can see tree-like branching pattern of the interlobular ducts. And finally, they form common uh, excretory duct. So this type of structure is characteristic for different exocrine glands, uh, including salivary glands, pancreas, liver, mammary glands, prostate, uh, also valvourethral glands, lacrimal also. Uh, and let's look at the differences. So here we can see general similarities, which are characteristic for different organs. And now we are going to the differences. So here we can see typical exocrine gland. It has body and duct. Uh, and um, here we can see pancreas as an example, it's body and it's duct to anatomical parts, but also there is duct which excites from the gland and duct which is located inside the gland. There is duct system. Uh, so here we can see this. Um, and also salivary glands, they have body and duct. Um, liver also it has body and duct, bile ducts. Um, so uh, the organization of individual organs uh, is similar, but it differs from the typical one. So there are some differences in those organs. Each organ has its own characteristics or unique structural features. And let's look at the differences. Uh, so liver. What is the feature of liver? It has a gallbladder. Here we can see so duct also has gallbladder, which uh, is associated with duct system, and it accumulates and concentrates the bile. It's feature of liver duct system. In the pancreas, feature of body and duct, it's the presence of the ductus pancreaticus accessorius, accessory duct, it's present here. Uh, sometimes there is one duct, sometimes there are two ducts. Uh, also, in the um, here we can see in pancreas two ducts, which um, may be opened separately. Uh, in salivary glands, ducts are short and they are open directly in the oral cavity. Uh, and there are features of those glands. Also, there are different structural units in different glands. So, uh, there are anatomical structural units, lobe, segment and lobule. Uh, here we can see that liver is composed of lobes. Uh, we know that there are four lobes in liver. Uh, here we can see uh, right, left, and on the lower surface there is caudate and quadrate lobes. And each lobe is made up of segments. They are smaller structures. Uh, they form the lobes. And segments, they are divided into lobules, the smallest group, uh, which we already know, it's lobule. Uh, and lobules, they are separated uh, by the dense connective tissue, which forms the septa. So here we can see structural units of the glands. But uh, 
I tell you again that the organization of individual organs differs from the typical one. So let's look at the differences, specific differences of this organization. Uh, so liver. In the liver, uh, we have lobes, segments, and lobules. But in the lobules in human liver, interlobular septa aren't well developed. So we cannot see clearly the borders between the lobes. In the pancreas, uh, pancreas hasn't division into lobes and segments. It's di uh, divided directly into the lobules. Here we can see uh, anatomical parts, head, body, and tail. And those anatomical parts, they are divided directly into the lobules. Uh, in the salivary glands, they also haven't lobes and segments. They have common body, which is divided into lobules. So only lobules are present in salivary glands. And now let's look at the inner structure of the glands. We already know that there is stroma and parenchyma. Stroma is capsule, septa, and uh, interstitial connective tissue inside the lobules. And parenchyma, it contains secretory units and excretory ducts. So let's look at the differences of the stroma and parenchyma of the glands. And mainly differences are in the parenchyma. Uh, so uh, here we can see uh, secretory units and ducts. It's parenchyma, it's specific, and connective tissue, it forms the lobules. Uh, interlobular connective tissue and interlobular connective tissue, it forms septa and capsule. And uh, secretory units are composed of different cells, so differences begin from the cells. And cells uh, generally may be divided into serous and mucous, or serocytes and mucocytes. And uh, we have seen them in different organs, for example, in the salivary glands. And they have different type of secretion. Serous cell, it produces mainly uh, proteins, mainly serous secret, uh, and it has well-developed rough endoplasmic reticulum. And mucous cell, it produces mainly mucus, and it has a well-developed smooth endoplasmic reticulum, and they have different appearance. And in the gland, here we can see it's serous cell, and it provides the secretion of proteins and uh, different fluid substances. For example, there is serous type of saliva. In salivary gland, it's more uh, fluid. And mucous cells or mucocytes, they produce a lot of mucus, which is released from the cell. And uh, it's mucus type of secret. So they have structural differences. And different glands, they have or serocytes, or mucocytes, or both types of cells. So uh, these different types of secretion, they result in differences of structure. Uh, and uh, let's look at the at these features. Here we can see secretory unit. It's composed of serous cells. Here we can see serocytes, and also there is a duct, uh, basal membrane, and connective tissue which surrounds this secretory unit. And we call this secretory unit serous. Uh, it contains uh, serocytes only. Uh, secretory unit uh, which contains uh, mucocytes only, it's called mucous secretory unit. And also some glands, they have mixed secretory units. They have serous demilum, which is located between the uh, mucocytes, between the mucous cells. And glands, um, they may be divided into uh, different groups according to the uh, composition of the secretory units. Uh, so here we can see uh, serous, mucous, and mixed. All those uh, units are opened into the intercalated ducts. Here we can see intercalated ducts, and uh, they are continued into the striated ducts. It's a specific feature of the uh, salivary glands. And in salivary glands, they form intralobular ducts. Um, and also there are uh, interlobular ducts which excite from the lobules and they form another um, uh, orders of the branch. Uh, so let's look at the differences in the different glands. Uh, parotid gland, salivary gland, uh, it contains only serous secretory units uh, and uh, also it has well developed intercalated ducts here and also uh, street ducts are present. Uh, Serous secretory units are surrounded by the myoepithelial cells, 
which have ability for contractions and they push out secret from the secretory cells and its specific feature of the glands myopithelial cells its specific feature of the uh, glands which derive from ectoderm so myopithelial cells may be present in the salivary glands uh, in the mammary gland in the sweet glands but uh, myopithelial cells are never present in the uh, pancreas because pancreas its parenchyma it develops from endoderm uh, so myopithelial cells they are present in the ectodermal glands uh, and also there are intercalated and treated uh, intralobular ducts they are specific for salivary glands uh, and uh, ducts which excite from the lobules they are called interlobular ducts and in the salivary glands they are aligned with stratified epithelium uh, they uh, are aligned with some, uh, certified cuboid or columnar in the uh, small ducts and common duct even has a certified squamous non keratinized epithelium which continues into the epithelium of the oral cavity so it's the parotid gland uh, and in other glands uh, of uh, as, uh, which produce saliva uh, there are submandibular and sublingual gland submandibular gland it has serous and mixed secretory units here we can see them it's serous and mixed also it has myopithelial cells intercalated and treated interlobular ducts and also stratified epithelium in the interlobular ducts so it's a structure of submandibular gland and two types of secretory units are present serous and mixed and in sublingual gland there are three types of secretory units serous mixed and mucous so mucous secretory units appear in the sublingual gland and in the mandibular gland we have only serous and mixed so it's also a specific feature of the salivary glands uh, and we can see that they differ in different types of the uh, secretory units and here we can see sublingual gland it's a drawing of histological slide and there are serous mixed and mucous secretory units and ducts which are located in the uh, intra interlobular connective tissue they are aligned with certified cuboid or columnar epithelium uh, so uh, there are features of the salivary glands uh, pancreas pancreas develops from the endoderm so it never uh, have it never has uh, the myopithelial cells uh, and secretory unit uh, is serous here we can see serous secretory unit and cells of uh, serous secretory units uh, they are serous cells or pancreatic acinar cells they are similar to serocytes of the salivary glands but they have another type of staining we can reveal here uh, red granules or pink granules uh, they form the homogenic pole of the cell and uh, they contain zymogenes enzymes there are progenitors of enzymes or inactive enzymes here we can see them uh, its feature and basal zone it, which contains uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum it has basophilic or blue staining and that's why pancreas it differs from the salivary glands by the staining so first it's absence of uh, myopithelial cells specific staining of the uh, pancreatic cells which have zymogenic and homogenic poles uh, also there is a feature of the intercalated duct intercalated ducts they were present in the salivary glands and here we can see this duct and it uh, begins as a central acinar cells so this duct is intercalated inside the acinus of the pancreas it's uh, it begins inside the pancreatic acinus um, Interlobular ducts are aligned with simple epithelium. Uh, pancreas it develops from endoderm, and endoderm usually gives rise only to the simple epithelia. So, uh, if you remember, salivary glands they have certified epithelium in the uh, interlobular ducts, and in the pancreas uh, there is uh, only simple epithelium in the ducts. It's uh, cuboid in the small ducts and columnar in the bigger ducts. So here we can see pancreas. 
And also a specific feature of pancreas, its presence of islets of lantern hands. Pancreas uh, isn't clearly exocrine gland. It's mixed gland, which has exocrine and endocrine parts. And endocrine parts, it includes islets of Langergans, which are located, they are distributed between the pancreatic acini. So it's a feature of uh, pancreas structure. Here we can see islet of Langergans. Uh, it's endocrine part of the pancreas. It contains different endocrine cells, which are distributed. Uh, they form groups, clusters, uh, which contain also capillaries and those Cells, they release their secretory products, they release hormones in their blood vessels, but not in the duct. Uh, it's endocrine part of the pancreas. And here we can see pancreas. It's a like structure of, it's similar to the structure of salivary, salivary glands, but also inside the lobules we can see, we can find here islets of Langergans, which are located near the pancreatic acin. So here we can see this feature of pancreas structure. Uh, and here we can see on the drawing of the histological slide, there are pancreatic acini, and uh, there are septa between the lobules, uh, and between the acini there are islets of Langergans, and septa, they contain interlobular ducts, but those ducts, they haven't uh, stratified epithelium, they have simple epithelium only. It's also a feature of pancreas. Next gland, it's liver. Liver it has complex structure of lobules. Lobules they have a hexagonal shape, and they are formed by hepatic trabecula or hepatic plates. And uh, each hepatic plate it contains bile capillary. Here we can see hepatic cords or hepatic plates. And here we can see those hepatic plates. And between them there are sinusoids. And each hepatic plate or cord it contains bile capillary uh, and or bile canalicule. And uh, this um, liver uh, lobules uh, or hepatic uh, plates they have specific feature and they remind us of uh, tubular exocrine uh, secretory units so they may be described as an exocrine uh, secretory units and the lumen uh, which contains bile it's hepatic canaliculus so here we can see liver and those canaliculus they are opened in the colonials uh, which uh, carry bile to the bile ducts Next gland, uh, which also is typical exocrine gland, it's memory gland. And memory gland, uh, it has some features. So, uh, first of all, memory gland, it hasn't one common duct. Uh, there are several ducts uh, which uh, carry uh, milk from the secretory units. Here we can see secretory units. They form groups which are opened in the duct and several ducts uh, they carry milk from entire gland. And this milk is released on the uh, top of the nipple. Uh, so there are some openings instead of one. Uh, another feature is that uh, memory gland it has its own capsule. It's located in the subcutaneous fat. So it's located under the skin, and skin may be described as a capsule of the memory gland. Uh, and memory gland it has uh, lobules. Lobules they have interlobular connective tissue, interlobular septa. Uh, so it's typical structure of the gland. Um, and ducts they form lactiferous like sinuses, wide regions where milk is accumulated. And memory gland, it derives from ectoderm, so there are myoepithelial cells, uh, similar to those which are present in the salivary glands. Here we can see myoepithelial cells. And secretory cells, they are cuboid or columnar in shape, and they form alveolar units instead of acinar, which uh, haven't big cavity. In the memory gland, uh, units are, secretory units are alveolar. So it's the feature of the structure of memory gland. And here we can see histological slide, drawing of the slide, and there are lobules of the memory gland. Uh, there are interlobular septa and intralobular connective tissue. Those round structures, they are secretory units. There are septa. Inside the septa, there are ducts. Uh, they are interlobular ducts. And interlobular ducts in the memory gland, they also have stratified epithelium as well as in the salivary glands. So memory gland, it has ectodermal origin. 
and it has features which are characteristic for the ectodermal glands. Um, next gland, it's prostate gland. Uh, also, it contains several glands which are opened in the ducts and ducts uh, are opened in the urethra. So, prostate gland, it hasn't uh, one common duct like uh, liver, pancreas or salivary glands. It has some ducts which independently are opened into urethra. Here we can see this urethra and there are ducts which are opened in it and uh, the secretory units, they form three groups of uh, glands. Uh, there are peripheral or main glands, intermediate or submucosal glands and the innermost are mucosal glands. So there are three groups of glands and each group it has own duct system. And prostate gland, it hasn't all uh, common duct, and all the ducts, they are uh, opened directly into urethra. Uh, next feature of the prostate gland, it's stroma. Uh, stroma of prostate gland is fibromuscular. It contains uh, connective tissue, but also this connective tissue has smooth myocytes, which are distributed in it. Uh, and that's why stroma is fibromuscular. It has ability for contraction. And prostate works like a sphincter. Here we can see prostate, and it may be contracted um, to uh, regulate urine flow from the urinary bladder and to push out secretory products from the secretory unit. Uh, contraction of the fiber muscular stroma it helps to release secretory products. And here we can see prostate gland. Uh, it has. Um, Inside urethra, here we can see urethra, there are uh, central glands uh, in the innermost group of glands, they are mucosal. Next group, it's submucosal glands, and the most peripheral glands, they are chief glands. And between them, there are layers of connective tissue uh, and capsule which surrounds entire prostate gland. So here we can see that there are numerous similarities between the typical exocrine glands and also they have features which you should remember uh, to um, describe the structure and to understand the structure of different organs of visceral systems. And next group of the parenchymal organs, the are organs of visceral systems that they uh, remind us of exocrine glands but they aren't exocrine glands. And they include lungs, kidneys, testes, and ovaries. They aren't typical exocrine glands, but they also have parenchyma and stroma. So let's look at those organs. Here you can see lungs. And lungs, they have bronchial tree, uh, which reminds us of a uh, duct system. And uh, lungs, they develop like an exocrine gland in the embryogenesis. Those ducts, they form branched tree-like structure. And the endpoints of the lungs, they form a respiratory portion of the respiratory system where gas exchange takes place, alveoli, which can be described like um, secretory units. So bronchi and bronchioles, they are alike the ducts, and alveoli, they are alike the secretory units of the gland. But they aren't the glands, lungs, but they are typical parenchymal organs. Uh, lungs, they are divided into lobes, like liver. Lobes are divided into segments. Here we can see lobar bronchi, right lung. It has three lobes, left it has two lobes. Uh, lobes are divided into ten segments, which uh, are supported by segmental bronchi. And um, here we can see segments of the lungs. And segments, they are divided into the lobules. Uh, here we can see lobule. Uh, and, um, there are different parts of the respiratory portion. Uh, here we can see it. It's preterminal and two terminal bronchioles, and this region of lung, which is supported, which corresponds to one terminal uh, preterminal bronchiole, we call this lobule or pulmonary lobule. And we can see here respiratory portion of lung, which is like the uh, terminal unit or secretory unit. But this unit they don't provide secretion; they provide gas exchange. Uh, so, way for the uh, terminal units, uh, it's bronchial tree, and terminal units, uh, they provide main function of lungs, it's gas exchange. 
and here we can see it. And also there is a parenchyma and uh, also there is a stroma. Parenchyma is specific. Uh, it's those epithelial structures which form bronchi and um, this alveoli. Their walls and they are supported by the connective tissue which fills the spaces between alveoli, it forms separate between the alveoli and neighboring lobules, and we call this stroma of lungs. So the similar structure also is found in the lungs. And here we can see uh, its respiratory portion and also between the lobules, especially connective tissue is well developed, it surrounds different uh, blood vessels, bronchi, bronchioles, and it can be found there. But also very, very thin layers of connective tissue uh, are present between uh, the parts of respiratory portion of respiratory system. Next organs, which aren't glands, but they are alive, the glands are kidneys. Here we can see kidneys, and they are divided into lobes. Here we can see lobe, it contains pyramid and sub uh, surrounding uh, cortex, it's called lobe. And uh, lobes are divided into lobules. Here we can see lobule. And lobule is those region of kidney which corresponds to one collecting tubule. So it contains all nephrons which are opened in one collecting tubule. And tubules, they form some orders of branching which are opened into calyces and renal pelvis. So the system of renal tubules, calyces and pelvis, uh, it may be described as an excretory duct of the gland. Here we can see that. And what can we call a terminal unit? Uh, it's nephron, uh, it's terminal but not secretory unit. Uh, and nephrons, they are formed by uh, epithelial tissue, which provides main function of uh, kidney urine formation. And those tubules, epithelial tubules, they are surrounded by loose fibrous connective tissue or interstitium, which contains blood vessels, nerves, so it's supportive part of kidney. And uh, you should know that parenchyma of kidney is formed by nephrons, collecting tubules and ducts, and stroma is loose fibrous connective tissue. Next organ, which is a like uh, organ of the uh, glandular organ, but it's not the completely uh, typical gland, it's testes. It's organ of male reproductive system. And uh, here we can see testes, it's also divided into the lobules. Uh, they have uh, intralobular connective tissue, loose fibrous connective tissue, which fills the lobules. And there are septa between the lobules, which divide them. And there is capsule of testis, which is called tunica albuginea. And inside the lobules, there are um, main structural and functional units of testis. And uh, they are convoluted seminiferous tubules. So they are forming parenchyma of testes. Uh, here you can see convoluted seminiferous tubules. And uh, they aren't secretory units, but they uh, are analog of the secretory units. Next, it's straight tubule, which excites from each lobule, and it uh, corresponds to the intralobular ducts, which uh, duct which excites from the lobule. Uh, red testis or network uh, which is formed by the straight tubules, it corresponds to intralobular ducts. It's located out of the lobules and it's located in the mediastinum testis. So it's red testis. And also there are ductally efferentes. They excite from red testis. Uh, they are located here and uh, they may be described as an analog of a single common excretory duct. So they uh, release uh, products, secretory products uh, from testes. They release spermatozoa and also different fluids which are produced in the seminiferous tract. So here we can see the structure of testes. And ovary. Ovary also is parenchymal organ, which is not the typical exocrine gland, but it's similar to the exocrine gland. Uh, also, it has parenchyma and stroma. Parenchyma of the ovary is follicles and uh, derivatives of the follicles. Here we can see it's parenchyma. And also there is stroma, it's connective tissue, 
uh, loose fibrous connective tissue, which forms uh, stroma of the cortex and uh, stroma of medulla. And also there is a, a capsule, connective tissue capsule of the ovary, which also is called tunica albuginea, as well as in the testes. Here we can see this tunica albuginea. So ovary also has parenchyma and stroma, but uh, there is no division into lobes, segments, and lobules. Ovary has only cortex and medulla. It's structure of the ovary. Uh, and here we can see different follicles and their derivatives. They are formed by epithelium, and they provide main functions of the ovary. They form ova, and also they produce hormones, estrogens, uh, and also corpus luteum produces progesterone. Uh, and um, Follicles are analogs of secretory units, uh, which produce uh, uh, hormones, they provide endocrine functions, they produce uh, estrogens, but excretory ducts are absent. And uh, this endocrine uh, function is realized by uh, the secretion directly into the bloodstream. Uh, follicular cells and corpus luteum, they release their content in the bloodstream. But how to release the ovum? These uh, cells, which are main in the ovaries, uh, this release is provided uh, via ovulation. So release of ova is provided via ovulation. It's way to release these uh, cells from the ovary. So there are not the ducts alike in the male reproductive system or like in the glands. And release is provided by the ovulation. So we described two uh, groups of uh, parenchymal organs, which are formed by the visceral systems. Systems, uh, it's digestive, uh, respiratory, male, female, uh, reproductive systems. And also uh, there are parenchymal organs, which are uh, belonging to the uh, regulatory systems, endocrine and immune system. And we'll begin from the endocrine system. Uh, there are organs of the endocrine system. They are endocrine glands. And they include thyroid gland, parathyroid glands, uh, epiphysis and adenohypophysis, and adrenal glands. And also islets of Langergans and in other endocrine structures, they uh, belong to the endocrine system. So let's look at the typical structure of the endocrine gland. It's also parenchymal organ. It also has parenchyma and stroma. And let's look at this structure. So here we can see endocrine gland. Uh, it has a uh, body, but ducts are absent. They aren't present in the endocrine gland. Uh, and here we can see secretory units. They may be different. They may be trabecular or follicles. And between them, there are numerous uh, capillaries and these uh, secretory cells, they release their secretory products into the capillaries. Uh, and it's way to release their secretory products. It's called endocrine secretion. And also there is connective tissue, which together with the capillaries, it forms stroma of the endocrine gland. And uh, here we can see uh, intralobular stroma, which is located inside the lobule. It's loose fibrous connective tissue with capillaries, with nerves. And also endocrine glands are divided into the lobules, as well as exocrine glands. Here we can see this division. And uh, there is a capsule and septa, uh, which divide this gland into the lobules. Also, there are secretory ducts. So only difference between endocrine, typical endocrine and exocrine gland, is absence of uh, excretory ducts in the endocrine gland. It hasn't ducts because it releases secretory products into the bloodstream. And let's look at the different organs of the endocrine system. Uh, so here we can see composition of the endocrine gland, secretory units intralobular connective tissue or stroma intralobular and intralobular septa with capsule which are formed by dense fibrous connective tissue and we can see that stroma this stroma is similar to the stroma of in other organs uh, and here we can see exocrine gland which has a duct and endocrine gland it hasn't a duct and these secretory units they may be different there are some differences in their organization uh, and let's begin from the uh, thyroid gland. Um, here we can see thyroid gland, and uh, it uh, is divided into right and, uh, right and left lobes, and also there is an additional pyramidal lobe. 
Uh, it has in segments and lobes, they contain lobules. Here we can see lobules which form thyroid gland. Here we can see lobulated structure of the thyroid gland. And here we can see secretory units, they are called follicles. They are bubble-like structures which wall is formed by the uh, simple uh, cuboid epithelium. Here we can see it. And those lobules, they contain uh, uh, intralobular connective tissue. Here we can see it. Uh, it fills the space between the lobules. Uh, and also between the lobules, there are septa. And also there is a capsule. So a typical structure of the gland. But the feature is parenchyma, which forms the follicles. Here we can see those follicles, which form a uh, thyroid gland. Uh, so structural units are lobules, and secretory units are follicles. If you remember, uh, in other organs, uh, there are secretory units acinia or different tubular structures. And in thyroid gland, there are follicles, bubble-like structures. They are made up of thyrocytes, cells which produce uh, hormones, thyroid hormones, T3 and T4. And uh, follicles, they are filled by colloid, special substance. It's fluid uh, containing thyroglobulin. Here we can see it. And between the um, follicles, there are interfollicular islets. They fill the space between the islets. Uh, and uh, parenchyma of the thyroid gland, it contains follicles and interfollicular cells. And stroma, uh, it contains capsule, septa, and uh, interstitial connective tissue, which is located inside the thyroid gland. Uh, and uh, thyroid gland, it has cavities. Uh, inside the follicles, and follicles also are present in the ovaries. Also, there are cavities filled with estrogens, uh, and uh, special epithelium also produces estrogens. So, uh, the similar structure may be found in thyroid gland and in the ovaries, but in the ovaries, epithelium is stratified. Uh, parathyroid glands. Uh, here we can see four parathyroid glands. Uh, they uh, have capsules. They are much smaller than thyroid glands. So here we can see them. They are located on the posterior surface uh, of the thyroid glands. Uh, usually there are four thyroid, parathyroid glands, sometimes two, right and left. Uh, and uh, they have capsule. Uh, usually it's common with uh, thyroid gland. Uh, and uh, also there are septa and interstitial connective tissue. But uh, let's look at the secretory units of the parathyroid glands. Uh, the secretory units are trabecular instead of the follicles. So thyroid gland it has follicles, and parathyroid glands we have trabecular. Uh, and what is trabecular? Trabecular is a row of uh, Exocrine, endocrine cells, uh, which produce some hormone, and they uh, are located near the capillaries. So, uh, cords of cells or rows of cells are called trabecula. In thyroid glands, there are follicles with cavity, uh, bubble-like structures, and in parathyroid gland, uh, there are trabecula, uh, which uh, are located near the capillaries. Uh, they are located very close to the capillaries to release their secretory products in the capillaries. So here we can see parathyroid gland. And it contains cells which are called parathyrocytes. And also there are acidophilic parathyrocytes uh, which uh, are uh, old or aging parathyrocytes. Parathyrocytes, they produce product hormone which uh, increases level of calcium in blood. And uh, opposite action is provided by the uh, hormone, uh, it's calcitonin, uh, which is produced by C cells of thyroid gland. Uh, they regulate calcium level in blood. Calcitonin decreases calcium, and uh, parad hormone, it increases calcium level in blood. Uh, and here we can see it's trabecule of cells, uh, and uh, also there are capillaries, wall of capillary, and uh, blood, and another um, uh, endocrine cells, which form trabecula. And uh, usually, typical structure for uh, endocrine glands is presence of trabecula. Uh, in thyroid gland, uh, it's the only endocrine gland which has follicles, uh, and in other completely endocrine glands, they have trabecula. 
uh, trabecula are present in parathyroid glands, in adrenal glands, and in the adenohypophysis. So, uh, trabecular structure is more typical. So, uh, cords or rows of cells, between them there are capillaries which collect uh, hormones from the endocrine glands. Adrenal glands. Uh, adrenal glands, they include two parts, it's cortex and medulla, and the uh, two anatomical parts, they are practically two functionally and embryogenetically different glands. Uh, outer, it's cortex, inner, it's uh, medulla, uh, and they have different uh, features of their functioning and embryogenesis. Uh, so, cortex. Cortex is outer layer. It develops from sphalcnotoma and medulla. It develops from um, neural crest. And uh, cortex, it produces steroid hormones. They have lipid structure. And uh, medulla, it produces uh, uh, adrenaline and noradrenaline, which are produced pro from amino acids. So they are amino hormones. And uh, they have different features of uh, production and also cells are different. Cortex is covered by capsule, connective tissue capsule, but cortex is not an entire adrenal gland is not divided into the lobules or lobes. So there is a capsule and cortex directly under the capsule. Uh, cortex uh, it has uh, zona glomerulosa, zona fasciculata and somana uh, reticularis, glomerulosa, fasciculata, reticularis, three layers, and they produce different hormones. Glomerulosa it produces uh, uh, aldosterone, mineralocorticoids, which regulate uh, level of sodium and potassium. Uh, Sona fasciculata it produces uh, glucocorticoids, which regulate sugar level in blood, and also they are stress hormones. And sona uh, reticularis, it produces female and male sex hormones, uh, which uh, are produced uh, also in ovaries and testes, but also adrenal glands, they produce those hormones, both female and male, in both in females and males, but in different proportions. And mainly before the puberty, adrenal glands, they produce mainly these hormones. And uh, medulla of adrenal glands, it's composed of chromaffin cells, uh, epinephrocytes and norepinephrocytes, which produce adrenaline. Uh, and uh, they are related to the nervous cells. Uh, they are cells uh, which aren't uh, typical epithelial cells. Uh, and uh, they produce adrenaline and noradrenaline, which regulate arterial pressure. And also they are stress hormones. And here we can see that uh, adrenal cortex, which is composed of typical uh, uh, secretory epithelium, uh, it's formed by the uh, cords, the trabecula. Here we can see trabecula, they form uh, mainly a zona fasciculata, but also in zona reticularis and zona glomerulosa, we can find something like trabecula. And between them, there are capillaries which receive those hormones. Here we can see uh, the pattern of organization of cells in the adrenal cortex. And next organ of endocrine system is hypophysis. Uh, here we can see a pituitary gland. And it has two parts. It's adenohypophysis and neurohypophysis. Uh, they also two anatomical parts that are practically two functionally and embryogenetically different glands. Um, neurohypophysis, it derives from the brain. Uh, and it's made up of nervous tissue. And adenohypophysis, uh, it's uh, epithelial tissue, secretory epithelium, and it's made up of trabecula, which produce hormones. Uh, neurohypophysis doesn't produce own hormones. It's a place where uh, hypothalamic hormones are released in the bloodstream. But adenohypophysis, uh, it's a part uh, which is composed of typical uh, uh, secretory epithelial cells. And here we can see them. Uh, there are numerous cells, they form trabecula, uh, and here we can see this trabecula, which they are similar to those which are found in the parathyroid gland, in the um, adrenal glands, but the feature is the presence of different cells. There are chromophobes, 
pale stained cells. Uh, they are non-active cells. They don't contain hormones. They are, they are just uh, they have just released their hormones, or they still not produce their hormones. And also there are chromophyll cells. They are divided into uh, acidophils, pink or red cells, and basophils, blue cells. Acidophils, they are uh, producing, there are two kinds of acidophils which produce uh, somatotrophic hormone or hormone of growth and prolactin which activates lactation in the mammary gland. And basophils, uh, they are of three types. First type produces uh, hormones uh, which uh, stimulate thyroid gland, another uh, stimulates uh, adrenal glands and uh, also uh, cortex of adrenal glands. Um, and also there are uh, cells which produce gonadotrophic hormones uh, FSH and LH. So uh, thyroid stimulating hormone, uh, adrenocorticotrophic hormone and FSH and LH hormones are produced by basophils. Uh, and, and here we can see acidophils, basophils and chromophobes which are non-active cells. Uh, and here we can see capillaries between the trabecula uh, and numerous trabecula which are located near each other. It's a type of organization of adenohypophysis. So here we can see that adenohypophysis, it has typical structure of the endocrine gland, but it hasn't division into the lobules. Uh, it has uh, only um, parts anterior, uh, uh, media, and tuberal part, so it has anatomical parts instead of lobules uh, or lobes. Uh, it has anatomical part which uh, can be clearly defined uh, at anatomical level. Uh, and also endocrine system includes endocrine part of the pancreas, the islet of Langergans. Also there are groups of cells which haven't a duct and they directly release their uh, content into the bloodstream. So they have antigravity, they form only a group of cells which is like trabecula. And also there are acidophilic cells, basophilic cells, acidophilic or A cells, they produce glucagon, basophilic cells or B cells or beta cells, they produce insulin. And also uh, there are another pale cells uh, which aren't uh, well stained, there are D cells, EC cells and others. They produce another minor hormones of the pancreas. Uh, and we uh, discussed typical parenchymal organs, uh, organs of uh, digestive, respiratory, urinary, female, male reproductive systems, which are visceral systems. We described organs of the endocrine system, which are typical uh, parenchymal organs, which parenchyma uh, is composed of epithelium, and all those organs, they have parenchyma, which is formed by epithelium, and stroma, it's uh, fibrous connective tissue, loose and dense, and one system remains, it's uh, immune system, uh, which includes immune lymphoid organs, and those organs, they uh, haven't typical structure typical for another organs because the parenchyma is not formed by the epithelium. The parenchyma includes immune cells which produce immune, which provide immune functions. Different immunocytes, uh, different immune cells, they are present in the immune system. So there are organs of immune system, spleen, lymph nodes, red bone marrow and thymus. Red bone marrow and thymus, they are central organs of the uh, immune system and spleen with lymph nodes, they are peripheral. And they have some similarities in their structure. So let's look at those features. Here we can see a lymph node and we will uh, take this as an example to uh, describe structure of the immune system. So organs of immune system, they have supporting structure, it's dense, uh, dense stroma or stroma of stroma. It includes capsule and septa. Here we can see capsule and septa, it's dense fibrous connective tissue. So it's similar to the glands uh, and in other organs, capsule and septa. And inside uh, them there is lymphoid tissue. Here we can see this lymphoid tissue, which is divided into parenchyma or lymphoid cells which provide main functions of the organ. Uh, there are lymphoid cells, lymphocytes, other immunocytes, 
It's functionally active and special part of the organ and uh, parenchyma of immune system. It's not epithelium, it's immune cells. Uh, so they aren't secretory cells, they aren't um, cells which produce something. They are immune cells, specialized immune cells. And also there is particular stroma or soft stroma uh, in the um, glands. We uh, know that there were uh, secretory uh, cells, uh, epithelial cells, and they were distributed inside the connective tissue. And uh, in reticular stroma, uh, um, immune cells, they are mixed with reticular tissue uh, or reticular stroma or soft stroma. Uh, it's not uh, typical parenchyma and stroma. Uh, it's so-called parenchyma and stroma in the immune system. So there are some features in the immune system because not epithelium and uh, fibrous connective tissue form parenchyma and stroma, but uh, lymphoid cells and reticular tissue. Um, so let's look. There are reticular cells. They form reticular tissue. It's soft stroma of the immune organs. Here we can see reticular it means network. So they form uh, reticular bases of the uh, immune organs. And between them, uh, there are lymphoid and other immune cells which provide main function. And they are surrounded, supported by the reticular stroma. Here we can see this type of structure. So in glands and uh, gland-like organs, a stroma, uh, intralobular stroma, it's loose fibrous connective tissue which surrounds epithelial structures. But in the immune system, uh, stroma it's uh, formed by the reticular cells, and between them there are numerous uh, immune cells which form parenchyma. And here we can see reticular cells. They form uh, reticular, they form bases, and between them there are immune cells, uh, which form uh, parenchyma of the uh, lymphoid tissue. And this lymphoid tissue is supported by capsule and septa, so they uh, are similar to those in the uh, glands and gland-like organs. Uh, so inner structure of those lobules is different. It differs from uh, typical uh, organs of visceral and endocrine systems. And let's look at the organs of immune system and uh, let's find their features. First organ is a lymph node. Here we can see it. Uh, its outer surface is covered by a capsule. Uh, inside it has lymphoid tissue. There are septa. And uh, there are uh, lymphatic vessels. Uh, these uh, lymphatic vessels, efferent lymphatic vessels, they carry lymph to the lymph node. Lymph is filtrated and efferent lymphatic vessels they carry lymph away from the lymph node. And also there are artery and vein, uh, they enter, artery enters and vein excites here, uh, it's portal part of the lymph node, and here we can see its structure. Uh, so supporting structures of the lymph node, it's capsule and uh, septa or trabecula, it's dense fibrous connective tissue. And inner part, lymphoid tissue, it forms three uh, parts, three groups of three zones. It's cortex, outer part of the lymph node, inner part, it's medulla, and between them there is a paracortical zone. Here it's paracortical zone, it's cortex, it's formed uh, by the lymphoid follicles. Here we can see groups of cells, round groups of cells, there are lymphoid follicles. It's medulla, which contains uh, medullary cords, and between them there is a paracortical zone, here we can see, and also there are spaces uh, filled with lymph, which provide lymph filtration, there are uh, lymphatic sinuses, there are cavities uh, located inside the lymphoid tissue. And here we can see it's uh, efferent lymphatic vessel, uh, it's lined by the epithelium, also it's uh, capsule, uh, capsule of the lymph uh, node and its cortex, and there are lymphatic sinuses. Under the capsule there is subcapsulary uh, sinus, inside the cortex it's cortical sinus, also there is a medullary and uh, portal sinus, which collects lymph from entire lymph node. Uh, there is a reticular tissue here, and also it's located inside the lymphatic sinuses here. And there are numerous uh, immune cells. Here we can see macrophages, 
and immune cells developing lymphocytes in the cortex uh, and medulla. There are B lymphocytes, and in the paracortical zone, there are T lymphocytes. And a lymph comes here and it carries different uh, substances, different um, bacteria may come to the lymph nodes. And lymph nodes, their main purpose is to neutralize those uh, different harmful factors. So, for example, uh, some bacteria is coming here. Here you can see green particle and it's eaten by the macrophage. Here you can see macrophage and it uh, takes those bacteria. And in other bacteria, they are coming to another microphages. So, a lymph node it provides a lymph filtration and uh, different uh, cells, harmful cells and factors, they are neutralized by the lymph nodes. Uh, and also, there are plasma cells which produce antibodies which are released in the lymph, which provide humoral immunity. And also, there is a maturation. Uh, development of the immune cells, there are T and B lymphocytes, which uh, have here contact with antigen, and also they provide their immune functions. They can excite from the lymph node and come to another organs, uh, and uh, some uh, lymphatic cells, lymphocytes, they are coming from tissues to the lymph node. So there is a circulation of the immune cells here. Uh, organ which also is peripheral organ of immune system is the spleen. It also has supporting structures, its capsule and septa or trabecula. And feature of the spleen is that a capsule and trabecula they contain smooth myocytes. And that's why spleen it has ability for the contraction. It may be contracted and it pushes out inner content to the blood vessels. And uh, spleen it accumulates its storage of erythrocytes. So after the hemorrhages, uh, those erythrocytes may be released. Uh, spleen pushes out them into the uh, peripheral bloodstream, and it's needed to prevent uh, complications of the hemorrhages. And here we can see supporting structures, it's capsule and septa. Capsule is covered by peritoneum, so spleen it has serosa, special feature of spleen. And uh, septa, they uh, form the supporting apparatus of spleen, and between them there is a lymphoid tissue of spleen, inner content. And lymphoid tissue in spleen is called pulp, a special name for the lymphoid tissue. And lymphoid tissue is divided into white pulp and red pulp. They have whitish or reddish shades on the uh, anatomical sections. And on histological sides, uh, white pulp, it contains, it includes lymphoid nodules, here we can see them. And red pulp, it uh, includes sinusoids and splenic cords, like medullary cords. But sinusoids, they also are like sinuses in the uh, lymph nodes, but sinusoids, they contain blood instead of lymph. And uh, lymph uh, nodules in spleen, they contain blood vessels, central artery passes through the lymph nodule, uh, and also it's the feature of spleen, which differs it from the lymph node. And here we can see reticular tissue, it also forms the basis of spleen. It's sinusoid, and it's macrophage, and uh, immune cells, lymphocytes, and uh, also there are numerous erythrocytes. Why? Because uh, blood comes uh, here to the uh, blood vessels, to the sinusoid, and it enters in the red pulp, and uh, it uh, lo is located inside the red pulp. So, uh, spleen is storage of the erythrocytes, uh, which are present here. And when uh, spleen is contracted, they are released in the peripheral blood. Uh, the next organ of the immune system, its central organ of immune system, it's red bone marrow. It's located inside the bones, and red bone marrow, it has also supporting structures. But those supporting structures, they aren't capsule and septa. Red bone marrow, uh, support for red bone marrow, it's spongy bony tissue, uh, which is located inside the bones. So there are bony trabecula, which form the basis for the soft uh, stroma and parenchyma. Here we can see bony trabecula. They are located here in, uh, instead of capsule and septa. So this stroma is denser than in other organs of the immune system. 
and lymphoid tissue uh, or uh, this tissue is uh, myeloid or uh, hemopoietic tissue of the red bone marrow uh, it contains hemopoietic cells on different stages of maturation not only lymphoid cells but also another hemopoietic cells are present here so this tissue is called uh, myeloid or lymphoid and commonly hemopoietic tissue and there are different hemopoietic cells which are progenitors of the formed elements of blood uh, progenitors of the immune cells uh, and they are resting inside the cavities, uh, inside the basis which is formed by the reticular stroma. Uh, and let's look at this. It's a strong or dense stroma, the raboni trabecula. They are here instead of uh, capsule and septa. And uh, they maintain the soft stroma, it's reticular tissue. Here we can see reticular cells. And also there are adipocytes, adipose cells. And uh, also there are macrophages, here we can see them, uh, and uh, also sinusoids, blood sinusoids. And here we can see numerous hemopoietic cells, uh, they form groups or families which surround macrophages, they are called hemopoietic islets. And there are numerous different cells, hemopoietic cells, which are progenitors of the uh, mature format elements of blood and immune cells. Here we can see the biggest cell of the red bone marrow, it's megakaryocyte, it's progenitor of the uh, thrombocytes, also there are progenitors of the erythrocytes and numerous cells progenitors of the leukocytes. Uh, and uh, these cells, uh, format elements of blood, they are released through the gaps in the sinusoid capillaries and they achieve the peripheral tissues. They enter in the blood and they achieve the peripheral tissues. Uh, and another central organ of the immune system is thymus. And thymus uh, structural units are uh, two lobes. It contains two lobes. Segments are absent and lobes are divided into the lobules. So thymus is like uh, thyroid glands. Particularly it reminds us of thyroid gland. Lobes without segments and lobules are present here. Thymus it provides maturation of T lymphocytes, so uh, it's also central organ of immune system. Uh, and uh, supportive structures are capsule and septa. And septa they divide thymus into lobules. So thymus is the only organ of the immune system which has lobules. And there are lobules, they have polygonal uh, shape, usually triangular, but in other irregular shapes may be present in thymus. And lymphoid tissue is divided into lobules, and each lobule it has a uh, cortex outer part, uh, it's darker stained, and medulla inner part of the lobule. And uh, stroma of the thymic lobules is formed by epithelial tissue instead of reticular. So students could please rem remember this because it's a very important feature of the thymus. Uh, all organs of immune system, they have reticular stroma, uh, but only thymus, it has epithelial stroma. And uh, thymus is the only organ in entire our body where stroma is formed by the epithelial tissue. We remember that epithelial tissue forms parenchyma in different organs, but in thymus it forms stroma. Uh, and uh, stroma of thymus is epithelial stroma. Uh, and here we can see epithelial stroma of thymus, it has vasoconrain, also there is a connective tissue which uh, forms capsule and septa. Here we can see epithelial cells of thymus. There are nurse cells or shaper cells which support, provide support for the uh, T lymphocytes developing. Also there are secretory uh, cells of stroma and uh, cells of cell bodies, old or dying uh, cells of the stroma. And this stroma is filled by the uh, parenchymal cells. Uh, here we can see parenchymal cells of thymus, uh, they are uh, developing T lymphocytes. Here we can see them. Uh, they are located uh, closer in the cortex and uh, they have uh, more uh, bigger distance in the medulla. That's why it results in the different staining of cortex and medulla. 
and here we can see this distribution of the cells in thymus. Uh, so, feature of thymus it, uh, that it provides development of T lymphocytes only, not all the cells. Uh, and T lymphocytes they are located, their basis, their support is provided by the epithelial stroma. Uh, and stroma in all the organs. It's fibrous connective tissue between the lobules. It's dense inside the lobules. It's loose connective tissue. Uh, in uh, in the uh, organs of immune system, stroma is reticular tissue. So there is common rule that stroma is connective tissue. Uh, one exception from this rule that in the immune system, stroma is reticular tissue and uh, all organs except thymus and thymus is the only organ when, where uh, stroma is epithelial tissue so all organs they have connective tissue fibrous connective tissue in the immune organs spleen lymph nodes and trend bone marrow it's reticular tissue and uh, the main exception is the thymus where stroma is formed by epithelial tissue but epithelial tissue in typical parenchymal organs it forms parenchyma instead of stroma. So there are features of different uh, parenchymal organs. We can see that there are different similarities between them. Uh, there is a, a parenchyma functionally active part and stroma supportive part uh, and supportive apparatus and different organs of different systems. They have a lot of similarities in their structure. So you should remember mainly features of parenchyma and which tissue forms the stroma. Uh, so, students, that's all, and thank you for your attention.